Hey guys, this is Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Today I'm going to explain a bit more um, destructible objects because we saw them briefly in the chapter about treasures to explain how destructible objects can contain treasures but I never really explained all the features and there are quite a lot of features when you see the dialogue. So destructible objects are actually um, anything that can be destroyed by the hero, for example by um, lifting the object or by cutting it with a sword, for example. So you can use them to represent um, bushes Play a sound when destroy, it will be bush. Then you can set a weight, so to indicate um, the lift ability required to lift the object. So let's say no lift ability, which means the player will be able to lift it unconditionally. Um, it can be cut and these ones are um, more specific damage on enemies it represents the number of life points enemies should lose when you throw a b the bush at them and okay let's uh, let's try this and of course you can set a treasure for example a heart and save the state of the treasure if you want okay so i can cut and you can also lift with the action key, okay? And by the way, with a link to the past graphics, you need this style under the bush. No, <laughs> this style. Sorry, this one. Yes. And this one is for a stone, so I will show you stones. We also have the stone sprite here, and the, um, the white skull stone also for the dark world. But um, yeah, in Zelda you cannot lift the stones at the beginning of the game. You need the the lift ability. So I will check weight and set the weight to one which means that th the player will need the, an ability of level 1, a lift ability of level 1. Okay, so here I can actually lift it because my initial save game did set the lift ability to 1. But if I remove it... Okay. This time, it's no longer possible. Um, it is possible to show a dialogue um, when the player unsuccessfully tries to lift the item. Um, it's a bit advanced, so we'll not do this in this in this video, but in another one. But just to uh, tell you how to do it. You can use the, the unlooked event to show a dialogue when the player presses the action key but is not allowed to lift the object. And it is actually possible to do it once for all stones of the game instead of individually for everyone. It's possible to do it once for all stones of the game using meta tables. But um we will see that later. You can also make the darker stones. So this one will probably have a weight of 2. And we can imagine that uh, you can make the, um, the glove item with two variants. And 
variant 1 will be, will give the liftability of 1 and variant 2 will give the liftability of 2 okay um, what you can also do is a vase here oh I forgot but the sound of, of stones should be actually stone <laughs> and not bush anymore this one is also stone um, let's allow the player to lift it without lift ability can be cut, maybe not and yeah, stones are heavier than bushes and vases probably so maybe you will put more damage here like two and three I don't know as you prefer um, okay so apparently I forgot to <laughs> remove this yes I don't want to cut stones with a sword but maybe you want to allow to cut vases with the sword some Zelda games allow to do that and maybe you will put a, a lift ability condition of one for example here because in in Zelda Into the Past you can you can lift vases um, at the beginning of the game, but it's not the case in Link's Awakening, for example. So yeah, you can customize, do this as you want. Um, so and these two ones are for um, bomb flowers, actually. There are there are bomb flowers in Zelda: Mystery of Solaris DX. So there are no bomb flowers in Link to the Past, so you won't find the bomb flower, any bomb flower sprite here. But um, you can find it in Zelda: Mystery of Sorrows DX if you're interested. And the particularity is that they are like bushes, but they can they ex they can explode when they are hit with a sword or when you throw them, and they also automatically regenerate. Anyway, um, you can also implement grass that can be cut. It's actually very similar to a bush, except that, of course, the sprite is different, but the main difference is that they should be walkable. So, to do this, you can change the ground of your destructible object. By default, the ground is a wall, cannot be traversed. But you can change it if you want to put a little grass ground here. It means that it will be walkable and that um, the player will walk uh, slower and there will be a little sp grass sprite under his feet. Like this. And a sound also. So I can no longer lift this because um, it's it's not a, an obstacle and I can, I can cut it with a sword because this is checked okay I think I explained everything I wanted to about destructible objects as always for as, as for any kind of entity you can check the documentation for more details and more features there are some events to know when it is get it is being lifted, when it's being cut, etc. And you can also get and set all properties dynamically. Okay, um, that's all for now. I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.